scientists finally discovered the truth about Easter Island. For decades, Easter Island has captivated people's imaginations. This remote volcanic island in the Pacific Ocean is one of thousands of isolated islands on our planet, yet it stands out. What makes Easter Island so special? The answer lies not just in the island itself but in the giant stone statues that dot its landscape. Who created these enormous stone heads? Did they serve a specific purpose? Where did their creators come from, and where did they go? It seems we're finally close to uncovering the truth. Easter Island, known as Rapanui to its first inhabitants, is a territory of Chile located in the southern Pacific Ocean. It's one of the most remote places in the world, sitting 1,200 miles away from its nearest neighbor, Pitcairn Island, and 2,300 miles from Chile. The only way to reach it is by plane, with a five-hour flight from Santiago, Chile, to Easter Island. Despite its small size of just 63 square miles, Easter Island is home to 887 giant stone statues known as Moai. These statues, carved between the 13th and 15th centuries, are easily recognized by their distinct features, long noses, wide chins, rectangular ears, heavy brows, and deeply set eyes. Interestingly, the nostrils curl like fish hooks. Initially, it was believed that the statues consisted only of heads, but excavations in May 2012 revealed that they have full bodies buried underground. In fact, the statues are incredibly tall. The largest stands at 33 feet and weighs 90 US tons. However, this isn't the record holder. An incomplete statue found on the island, based on scientific calculations, would have reached 70 feet in height and weighed around 297 US tons. Notably, the visible heads of the statues constitute about three-eighths of their total size. The arms are carved against the bodies, resting in various positions. Most of the statues, 834 out of 887, were carved from tuff, a material that is essentially compressed volcanic ash. Interestingly, all the statues except one group face inland, turning their backs to the ocean. It is believed that this orientation was meant to symbolize the statues protecting the villagers by overlooking the settlement. The only exceptions to this pattern are the statues at Ahu Akivi, a sacred site for the Rapa Nui people. There is also a unique statue on the island known as Tukuturi. This is the only statue found in a kneeling position. Scientists think it represents an ancient singer, as its posture resembles that of participants in the Ryu festival. The statue's head is lifted quite high, and it even features a beard. Tukaturi looks much more human-like compared to the other statues, with its smaller size and the distinctive red scoria material making it stand out. These facts are truly intriguing, aren't they? Keep watching, as there are many more mysteries to uncover. One of the biggest questions is how the massive statues were distributed across the island. When Europeans first arrived in 1722, they found a small local population of just 1,500 to 3,000 people. How could such a small community be responsible for the hundreds of statues on the island? Numerous theories have been proposed to explain how the statues were moved. One of the most popular, especially among mystery enthusiasts, is the idea that aliens created and transported the statues. However, we have to debunk this theory. The stone used to carve the statues comes from the island itself, specifically from an extinct volcano in the northeast of Easter Island, not from another planet. The mystery of how the Rapa Nui people moved these statues has long puzzled researchers. In the 1980s, some researchers decided to recreate a statue and attempt to move it using only tools that would have been available to the island's inhabitants. While it seemed impossible at first, an American archaeologist eventually succeeded in moving a 10-ton replica, shedding light on the remarkable ingenuity of the Rapa Nui people. Several decades later, another group of American scientists demonstrated that the islanders could encircle the huge statues with ropes and move them using a walking motion. They substantiated their theory by putting it into practice, successfully moving a full-sized replica for 330 feet using this method. This concept can indeed explain why Rapa Nui folklore claims the statues walked with the help of magic. It provides a plausible explanation for how the statues were transported to their designated locations. However, one lingering question remains, how could a small population create such magnificent and numerous monuments? 
A recent study aimed to determine the maximum number of inhabitants during the island's peak civilization period. The results were quite surprising. It was discovered that as many as 17 and a half thousand people could have comfortably lived on the island. At least 19% of the land could have been covered with fields of sweet potatoes, which were the main food source. Additionally, the islanders consumed significant amounts of seafood and fish. Given these numbers, it's clear there were enough people to create the stone masterpieces. But what happened to them? Why did they vanish? Initially, it was believed that the drastic decrease in the population of Easter Island was due to ecocide. The natives were thought to have cut down large forests and palm trees to make space for moving the statues and for agriculture, under the mistaken belief that the trees would regrow quickly. This misconception led to severe environmental degradation, resulting in hunger, wars, and even cannibalism. However, modern research has debunked this theory. Recent studies reveal that the Rapa Nui inhabitants were highly skilled agricultural engineers. They intentionally enriched their fields with volcanic rock, demonstrating advanced farming techniques. Furthermore, evidence suggests that people lived on the island for many centuries, and the population decline only began with the arrival of Europeans. A more accurate yet equally tragic explanation lies in the events of the 19th century. South American raiders frequently targeted the island for slaves, taking away half of the native population. European traders also brought new diseases to which the locals had no immunity, and enforced migration further exacerbated the situation. This combination of factors led to the catastrophic decline of a society that gifted the world the marvel of Easter Island's mysterious statues. I hope you enjoyed our video. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more educational content like this. Thanks for watching.